everyone and welcome back to my channel i know i've been gone for a while and i'm back my name is tadiwa and welcome to just a little bit of tea it is hot i'm hot we're in the middle of a heat wave and i'm feeling very very hot which is why my hair is just out of the way i'm just tired so today I thought, since we're on topic with everything that's going on in the world, I wanted to call out the NHS. I wanted to call out the two paramedics who took care, took care of me and basically I ended up in a coma Bruh. after they supposedly took care of me. Well, just as I thought, trash. So here it is, I did ask on Twitter if people wanted to hear about the story and the consensus was yes in the YouTube video, so here we go, let's get into it. My experience being in the UK, being a black person in the UK with the healthcare system has been extremely positive and negative. I think when I was in, when I was young enough to be in paediatrics, I was really well taken care of and all of a sudden that I became an adult, it was kind of like, okay, you're an adult now. A little bit of a little bit of background on my health I uh, I have I don't like to declare things because I don't like to claim it over myself but I have severe brittle asthma which means that I am asthmatic but um, my attacks are very severe ever since I was like 12 I wasn't born with asthma came when I was 12 and my attacks have always led me into HDU as a child and ICU as an adult. Um, and I have been intubated, comatose, intubated five times. And it was three times last year, like three times all in one year. And yeah, that's when they put you on life support on a breathing machine. So that has been my history. When this particular incident occurred, I was in university and it was the first time that I had had a severe, like an attack, a severe attack at uni. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through with you how I was treated and I feel like it was really unfair. As a black person, it felt so scary being in that situation. So yeah, we're gonna talk about all the issues in here and get to it. And I've got receipts. So it all started on the weekend of the like the 6th, like Friday the 6th of December 2019. I was doing like a lot of revision for my mocks in January and I was like banging out work at the library. As in going to the library all night, going then going home at like 8am to sleep and waking up to do other things i was very very busy and i had been visiting a lot of people people would have babies i really wanted to see my family so i had been doing a lot of that and <laughs> let's just say my body was just not the i went to visit some family on that weekend and i felt fine but i think i had been really cold and the trains were delayed so I was just feeling really really cold that day but I arrived and everything was peachy everything was good and I go to bed and all of a sudden my throat is moving mad everything is just and I was just thinking oh my gosh they've got a newborn and I'm feeling sick is it irresponsible for me to even stay when I was coming I felt fine but now that I'm here I feel sick and I was just feeling really bummed out and I remember messaging my mom like oh I'm sick I feel like I'm coming down with something and I'm just not really feeling myself so yeah like I was like my immune system on the 7th I was like which I think was the Saturday I was like my immune system is just crap you know and my chest yeah my chest felt congested and um just felt like there was a lot of mucus and like um my throat was hurting and my sinuses were moving mad so I thought oh my gosh like I just feel like the plague and to, then I woke up the next day and my tonsils were hurting like on the Saturday I woke up with my tonsils really in pain and sore and hurting and I was like and I had this ringing in my ears I was just not well at all and obviously like my mum was like oh sorry get well soon blah 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 texting because I'm at uni and um on the 8th 
which was the Sunday, I think we we're gonna go home. We we're meant to stay until the Monday, but I was like, I'm sick, so I decided that yeah, like we we're like, yeah, let's cut the trip short. Here I am feeling so crap on the Sunday and I'm like we arrive home and my babe stays with me while I'm you know sick and I was like I had a fever I had everything going on I didn't know what I'd go on I was having night sweats I was doing the most two cocodamols two ibuprofens that knocked me out for for sleep but I woke up and my nose was just moving mad and like I was in pain and when I blew this is like TMI but I'm just gonna be honest like I was there blowing into my 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 tissue I was burning into my tissue and there was like blood I was like ah what is going on I thought I've strained I've popped a blood vessel or something because I'm not well on the in the morning around 6 a.m. is when I was like doing all those and my nose was moving mad and then I messaged my mum again I was like yeah this is what's happening I was updating her and I told her that I would ring in the morning I would ring the GP in the morning and get an appointment so I rang the GP six times they didn't answer the phone they say ring at 8 a.m. I was ringing at 8 a.m. no one was answering I was like um I messaged my mum the updates I was like this is what's going on because I am a brittle asthmatic if I'm feeling any sort of way especially to do with my chest and my lungs I have to let my mum know because she's been with me in all my attacks so she knows the, the get down you know but I was just letting her know and two if anything were to happen she would need to drive three hours up to where I go for uni and if any doctors if any doctors were to ask me what's been going on I have it all written down so I was thinking, yeah, I'm being hella responsible. I upped my red inhalers, I'd upped my blue inhalers. So basically you have your base dose of inhalers that you should be on, right? And then if you get worse, you up them. So I was on like 10 puffs whenever needed of my blue inhaler, salbutamol inhaler. Then I was doing four puffs of my red inhaler every i think four hours i think my mum rang the gp and got me an appointment because she was like yeah she's brutal asthmatic so my mum rang and they listened which is one of the things i have an issue with at uni the uni gp don't seem to take uni students seriously like they almost feel i feel like they think that because we're uni students we don't understand our bodies and i was and so i was there like i'm really sick and they weren't having it but my mum rang and they got me an appointment so i got the appointment and went to the pharmacy first the pharmacy was like okay cool um let me give you some some lozenges right so i'm going cool calm got my lozenges went then to my appointment and she was, then the guy was like oh um you've got tonsillitis i don't think it's strep though even though i had like red sores at the back of my throat they were like no 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 i don't think it's strep i think it's um tonsillitis so he gave me penicillin and i've had to chronic like i say chronic like i've had tonsillitis so many times in my life that penicillin sometimes just doesn't work so i was there like mm, i've been on penicillin a lot he was like yeah no 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 just take it just take it gave me my penicillin gave me a lot actually i think it was a 10 day course that he gave me for so i'm here i'm coming home now i'm home things are going cool calm my babes leaves because i feel like i've perked up a little bit yeah um i sleep well i sleep well ish then the next day was the 10th of december and oh my gosh guys tuesday now i wake up and my breathing is just moving hella mad my chest is feeling really tight and when i breathe in and when i breathe out i'm just making noises so i'm like you know what i can't breathe so let me take my inhalers and let me call 111 guys i rang i rang and there was no answer oh jesus at <laughs> <laughs> this point i was a bit confused as to why nothing was no one was answering the phone at this was around eight o'clock that i did that um i think i rang my mom 
she didn't answer because she was getting ready for work so i was like cool right not gonna lie um i'm gonna call 999 because i can't breathe and i know i'm having an asthma attack so here i am on the phone to the lady on the ambulance i'm like yeah breathless like i'm barely getting my words out i'm like look i'm Taliwa. not obviously in this kind of state but i was like yeah my name's to you i'm having i'm 20 um i'm 19 years old i'm at uni and i'm having an asthma attack she was like okay um can you give me your address she could hear how breathless i was on the phone and she was like okay i'm calling for an ambulance like right now so she was like yeah the ambulance is on its way right so i'm on the phone to her like yeah and she decided that she was gonna stay with me on the phone until they arrive so i was just breathless just absolutely could not breathe at all huffing like it feels like you're trying to get air in but you can't get the air in so this was at um 8 35 that i messaged my mum saying i've called for an ambulance on the phone to them now asthma attack that's exactly the sentences that i used that i used to tell my mom exactly what one and i messaged my friend i'm like yo like can't breathe <laughs> i'm having an asthma attack and she like she wakes up and she's on her way i don't know i can't remember the time exactly i think it was 20 minutes on the phone with the ambulance lady and then the ambulance people arrived now this is where it all went south they first knowing that i am it's an asthma attack right can't breathe someone who can't breathe they decide and i left the door unlocked so that they could come in because I, I live in a studio flat so i could just walk to the door and i left it unlocked and it's on the street so I would just assume because in all the other times they usually just I've had ambulances to me a lot of times so they usually open the door but these lot decided to knock if I was if I was dead or something how would they have been able to come in so they I like struggle to the door open the door now and they're like they look at me it's two ladies right and I hope one day that they find this video two ladies there they are they're like oh okay um what's your name da -da -da. ask me my name i say my name i can't breathe and i'm they're forcing me to talk and i'm just wondering in my head like i can't breathe why are you forcing me to talk so they come in and they're asking me a bunch of questions i can't speak um i'm a bit in my head i'm a bit confused of what's going on because i'm not kind of used to that kind of treatment so there's a tall lady and a short lady tall ladies wearing glasses short ladies got like short hair yeah i'm going to describe them so that if you ever meet them up north you know what one so there i am can't breathe i'm on my bed and they're asking me about the history i'm telling them the history and my friend is on her way so i'm telling them my history that you know i've just been told that i've got tonsillitis i can't breathe this morning i was fine the days before a bit congested but i've been okay but today like it's really really bad um i've taken this much of my blue inhaler i've taken this much of my red inhaler i'm giving them all the information right and these people are just looking at me like this is a load of barnacles yeah okay they almost look like i wasted their time by calling them to see me and they haven't given me a nebulizer um they're checking my sats and my sats at the time were good i think they were like 98 and so my sats were fine and they were like oh they were talking in between themselves like oh she's fine her sats are fine she's absolutely fine like we're just gonna leave her here and um they didn't give me a nebulizer at all and a nebulizer is basically like aerosolized medication um basically the mask it's got oxygen and my medication it and i breathe it in so they haven't given me any of that <laughs> so i'm just wondering like raw 
they are not taking me seriously I can't breathe I've been having asthma attacks for like seven years I think I know when I'm really bad so I was there thinking in my head like crap what do I do then my friend comes in my friend came at like 8 so my friend came to my house at 8 55 and they had been there for about like five ten minutes already so she now comes in and she's like she messages my mom like i'm at taddy's now and she's out of breath because she ran from her flat her com to where i live so here i am and i can't breathe at all and she can see that then they're like yeah we're gonna leave her because it's just you she's just got a touch of tonsillitis like it's not that bad like i think it's the tonsillitis and that's why you're feeling a bit crap today their words so i'm now crying and i can't remember who called who whether it was my mom that called her or her that called my mom but she was then explaining to my mom that, that they're gonna leave her and my mom was not happy you could hear everything you could hear my struggle for breath and my friend is like you know huffing and puffing because she you know she's been running from one flat to the other and these people have the audacity to tell me see look at your friend she's even more out of breath than you and i was just there like Bruh. so i'm crying and my mom has to tell them like yo like she's brittle asthmatic she goes down very quickly she, she goes down she goes down very quickly and you know it just goes downhill so please and then they were talking against themselves when they finished talking to my mom they were like oh apparently she's a brittle asthmatic says her mom and the other one's like mm. and then they just start talking in between themselves then they asked me like oh where's your red inhaler so i'm looking for my red inhaler but i can't find it can't find the red inhaler i had it and now she's giving me a lecture she starts lecturing me on the fact that i should have all my medication you should have all your medication it's so bad and irresponsible of you to do and i can't breathe and i'm crying because i'm like you people are going to leave me here and i need to be in a hospital like asap like right now and they're just not they're just lecturing me on the fact that i don't have my red inhaler and i'm like i did i used it this morning i just can't find it right now and i can't breathe so why are you forcing me to look around my room for something when i did i can barely get up they're just thinking of leaving me and my mom's like you can't leave us in and they go we're gonna take you to the hospital because we can't leave you without medication and i'm like oh my gosh so they make me walk to the ambulance they make me walk outside to the ambulance they don't offer me a chair they don't offer me nothing i get to the ambulance they don't sit me down on the stretcher they sit me down on the side chair and only then when we're driving and we're, all, we're driving to the hospital and the hospital is about seven minutes away give or take a few they then give me a nebulizer right so a nebulizer lasts about 10 about 10 minutes so they give me a nebulizer on the way to the hospital as we're arriving so we arrive at the hospital they put uh, me in a chair now and they take me to the hospital they will meet the entrance and i just can't remember if it was a nurse or receptionist i was really out of it at that time now i was like going in and out and i was really woozy and i couldn't breathe and this this nurse is like oh my god like are you okay and i just can't breathe anymore so she starts running around to try and sort something out these people my nebulizer is still going and they don't do anything they don't check up on me nothing it's only the i think it was the tall one that started feeling a little bit bad when she was now looking at me and she could see that everyone was rushing and they were like she needs to go into recess and i've been in recess before so for me i was just really like i was very relaxed i was super calm i was like cool this is what's happening there's no point panicking because it's just going to make me worse so we go now to recess and basically um, they left me my friend said that one of them came when she started realizing it was peak and like resource were giving me back-to-back -back nibs back-to-back -back nibs and in the end nothing worked my mum arrived around midday at the hospital and you know I got intubated emergency intubation at 3 p.m. and yeah that was that was that and 
we then after being in hospital ICU and all of that came out cool calm went home we decided that the treatment I told my mum fully the treatment that occurred and we decided that we were going to take it to the northern ambulance whatever whatever so that they could investigate it so we made a complaint and the guy that we first had was really nice he listened to my story he was like can I have your friend's number so that I can listen to her you know side of things he was like it's really important that we get that account gave him the number he said I'll call in a couple of days and you know we said a full account of the story my mum spoke on my behalf gave a full account um we have the receipts we have the text we have everything and so tell me why we hear nothing absolutely nothing from them and then we start we hear back like oh the guy that was dealing with your investigation is no longer there i'm the new one that didn't go hand to hand and then i think it got changed again to another person and this person now basically after several months of hearing nothing no the first guy that spoke to me asked me what do i want out of this i said do you know what i don't just want a sorry like i want them to acknowledge what they've actually done and for there to be a difference because i could have been dead if it wasn't for the fact that my mum and my friend pushed them for the fact that i need to be in hospital in a hospital right now they were going to leave me and the guy that we were now dealing with the new guy was just not about it he was not about solving this problem he said that it's not basically telling us it's not that deep like it's actually not that deep and then he was like well they said they start they that paramedics lied on their medical records of what they did with me so they said that they had given me a nebulizer at home they never gave me a nebulizer at home and then when we said like no they never gave us a nebulizer at home they never gave me two nebulizers they only gave me the one which ended when i was in hospital so they can't say that they gave me more medication than they did that's lying that's fraud and then we were highlighting all the things they blatantly lied because when they asked them about it they lied about everything that they did with me and i was like you guys didn't do that and my friend and then my mom was like okay so have you spoken to the friend we didn't think that we needed to speak to your friend because she'll just give us the same account that you did but is that then not proof that we were telling the truth so in the end he said that your perception of what happened is wrong so obviously this was the Northwest Ambulance Service, Ambulance Service that was investigating this. So they basically told us that you're, you perceived it wrong and you're wrong about the medication that she gave you because why would she lie? Why would they lie on the records because it's illegal? I mean, you tell me why they would lie on the records because I, I don't know, I wasn't them but they did. And so they basically said that we were lying about it all and they decided to believe the ambulance people. They didn't investigate any of the... They didn't ask any witnesses because they thought that it that they would give the same account that we gave so they were like there's no point their words so I was there like my mom was really angry and so was I and we thought mm, what should we do do we bring awareness on Brit on Brit Lassma but then I thought no as soon as you get through the thing that someone can't breathe and it's a house call I'm pretty sure you're supposed to move with them these people didn't give me any medication and they started to panic when they saw how panicked the doctors were in the hospital and I want to make this clear in hospital um in terms of the ICU doctors that saw me and the doctors in resource that saw me except for the one that was really arrogant um it was really really nice my nurse was on it and she could see that I was not well and the other ICU doctor who's not from the UK I think he's from Canada like he was he literally saved my life and if it wasn't for him I don't think that I would be here besides God himself and when I even came out of you know being intubated he even spoke to me like nah I wouldn't work here he was like I wouldn't work in the UK with the racism he was like I'm not bringing my wife to the UK where there's racism and he's white and his wife is not so he was just there like yeah I'm not bringing her here he was like I'm just working for now and then I'm gonna go somewhere else he was like can't work here a whole white person white man can see how wrong the healthcare system is even just the uk in terms of racism then wow that's so profound that he doesn't even want to bring his wife here because he thought that the way that 
people are treated he was like especially black people he was really funny he was really nice but shout out to you and so in the end the investigation happened and they just decided to say that what they said and it broke my heart because i thought to myself do you know how many people black people symptoms are not taken seriously and if they had really left me at home i would have been finished would have been finished it would have been rest in peace till you were because how can you not move with urgency when you see someone who cannot breathe who's got a fever who is actually struggling to stay conscious like and this is not the first time that these kind of situations have occurred especially like if i'm in a and &E and i can't breathe and people leave me waiting for two or three hours when i'm saying i can't breathe and then they'll be surprised when they look at my sats and see that my oxygen saturation is in the 80s so as a healthcare professional and as someone that's training to be a healthcare professional i feel like i can't keep quiet and i also want to make a difference but at the same time i'm like the system is so broken it needs to be reformed people need to put away their racial biases and learn how people present different symptoms and how they do it they should know about brittle asthma that it's different from normal asthma they should know about a lot of things but they don't there's a lack of like education and with black people in the uk they die a lot because people just they have their own racial biases and they just don't take black people seriously especially black women so for me it was a really heartbreaking experience and i it, it caused a lot of trauma until now i don't ever want to deal with an ambulance i don't want to see it i don't want to see paramedics i just don't want none of that kind of energy around me and i pray i'll never have another asthma attack again but i just it's not something that i would wish upon my worst enemy and so by me speaking out i hope that someone else can realize what is actually happening make a difference even if you know a colleague that does this and do, doesn't take cases seriously then please like do your best to spread awareness i hope that the two paramedics learn their lesson and they don't treat anybody else like that the way that they treated me um and yeah thank you so much for listening to this video it was quite hard to film it's really hot so my camera keeps overheating and yeah i hope that you guys have a wonderful week i will see you in my next video upload on monday or tuesday i think tuesday yeah on tuesday and yeah like thank you please give it a thumbs up please share and please subscribe love you all bye